How did the Soviets counter the German war machines during World War II? In this video, we take an in-depth look at the IS-2, a tank that not only held its ground against Germany's feared Tiger Ones, but also turned the tide of battle on the Eastern Front. Equipped with a massive 122mm gun and thick armor, the IS-2 wasn't just another tank. It was a symbol of Soviet resilience and military might. We'll dive into thrilling war stories, unravel how the IS-2 stood up to the German Panther and Tiger tanks, and why it became a key part of Soviet military history. Don't miss out on this detailed WoW 2 documentary, perfect for fans of war documentaries and WBB2 history. The story of the IS-2, a Soviet heavy tank named after Joseph Stalin, is an important chapter in World War II history. Developed as part of the IS series, the IS-2 became a symbol of Soviet power on the battlefield and played a key role in breaking through fortified German defenses. Initially designed to solve issues with the earlier KV series, the IS-2 was a formidable machine that combined firepower, armor, and mobility in a way that made it a powerful force against Nazi Germany. Design and Development From KV to IS Series The IS-2 was born out of necessity. The earlier KV-1 tanks, which were heavily armored, struggled with mobility and were found to be lacking compared to the more agile T-34 medium tanks. In 1942, the Soviet military demanded a more efficient design that could overcome the shortcomings of the KV-1. The result was the KV-1S, which featured lighter armor to enhance speed but sacrificed some protection. However, the true turning point came with the introduction of the KV-85, a stopgap solution that incorporated a new turret design and an 85mm gun capable of facing the German Tiger tanks. The development of the IS series began with Object 237, a project aimed at creating a new heavy tank that would surpass the capabilities of the KV models. Object 237 led to the IS-85, later called IS-1, which entered service in late 1943. Soon after, the need for more firepower became apparent, especially in dealing with heavy German armor like the Panther and Tiger. This led to the development of the IS-122, which eventually became the IS-2. The IS-2 was equipped with a D-25 122mm gun, a weapon that could penetrate German tanks at considerable distances, providing a much-needed advantage on the battlefield. Firepower, the 122mm gun, one of the defining features of the IS-2, was its massive 122mm gun. Initially, Soviet engineers experimented with different weapons, including the D-10 100mm gun, but ultimately chose the D-25 122mm due to its superior anti-tank capabilities and availability of ammunition. This gun was powerful enough to engage enemy armor from long distances and proved effective in destroying fortifications and enemy positions. It used separate shells and powder charges, which slowed its rate of fire to around 2 to 3 rounds per minute. Despite this limitation, the firepower of the 122mm gun was unmatched, and its high explosive rounds could wreak havoc on infantry and structures alike. The IS-2's gun was tested against captured German tanks, including the Panther and Tiger I. The results showed that the D-25 could penetrate the Panther's front armor at ranges of up to 2,700 yards, while the Tiger's armor could be breached at closer distances. The IS-2's ability to deal with these formidable opponents made it an essential part of the Soviet arsenal, especially during key offensives in 1944 and 1945. Armor and Protection the IS-2's armor was designed with a focus on practicality and production efficiency. Unlike the complex construction of the German Tiger II, which required extensive machining, the IS-2's armor was largely made using casting techniques. This approach allowed for variations in armor thickness and reduced production costs, which was crucial for mass production during wartime. The front armor was especially thick, providing significant protection against enemy fire. While the tank's overall design concentrated armor in the areas most likely to be hit. However, the use of casting also introduced some inconsistencies in armor quality. Soviet casting technology at the time meant that armor thickness could vary, and lower quality alloys sometimes had to be used, making the armor prone to brittleness. Despite these drawbacks, 
The IS-2's armor was effective in combat, particularly against German 75mm and 88mm guns. The tank's silhouette was also lower than that of its German counterparts, making it a harder target to hit. Production and Design Evolution The IS-2 entered mass production in 1944, replacing the earlier IS-1. Its design incorporated lessons learned from previous models, resulting in a tank that was both lighter and more maneuverable than the KV series while retaining strong armor protection. The IS-2 was slightly heavier than the German Panther, but significantly lighter than the Tiger I and Tiger II. This balance of weight, armor, and firepower made it an effective breakthrough tank, capable of leading assaults and supporting infantry in their advance. Early models of the IS-2 featured a stepped front hull, which was later replaced with a single-piece casting for improved protection. Minor upgrades were also made throughout its production run, including the addition of anti-aircraft machine guns and improved mantlets. The IS-2 remained in production until it was succeeded by the IS-3 in 1945, which featured even more advanced armor and design improvements. Combat History Breaking Through German Defenses The IS-2 first saw combat in early 1944, and it quickly proved its worth on the battlefield. It was deployed in specialized guards' heavy tank regiments, which were tasked with leading major offensives and breaking through fortified German positions. Each regiment had 21 IS-2 tanks, organized into four companies, and these units were often at the forefront of Soviet attacks. The IS-2's role was to engage enemy bunkers, fortifications, and armored vehicles, clearing the way for lighter, more mobile tanks to exploit the breakthrough. One notable engagement involving the IS-2 took place on August 11, 1944, during the Soviet counteroffensive at Oglendau in Poland. The 53rd Guards Tank Brigade, supported by IS-2s, faced off against elements of the German 16th Panzer Division, including King Tiger tanks. The sandy terrain limited the movement of the heavy German tanks, allowing the Soviet forces to position their IS-2s in ambush. During the battle, three King Tigers were destroyed by the IS-2s at ranges of around 2,600 feet. The success of the IS-2s in this engagement demonstrated their effectiveness against even the heaviest German armor. The IS-2 continued to play a vital role in Soviet offensives throughout 1944 and 1945, including the push into Germany itself. It was instrumental in the Battle of Berlin, where its powerful gun and heavy armor allowed Soviet forces to overcome the last lines of German defense and capture the city. The IS-2's combination of firepower and protection made it an ideal tool for urban combat, where it could engage enemy strongpoints and provide direct support to advancing infantry. Post-war service and legacy. After World War II, the IS-2 continued to serve in the Soviet military and was also supplied to several allied nations, including China, Cuba, and North Korea. By the 1950s, the concept of the heavy tank was becoming obsolete replaced by the more versatile main battle tank that combined the mobility of medium tanks with the firepower of heavy tanks. Nevertheless, the IS-2 remained in service for many years, particularly in reserve units and as a training vehicle. The IS-2 underwent several upgrades during its post-war service, most notably the IS-2M modernization program in the 1950s. These upgrades included the addition of external fuel tanks, improved stowage, and protective skirting along the tracks. Despite being phased out of frontline service by the 1970s, the IS-2's impact on tank design and its role in World War II left a lasting legacy. It was one of the few Allied tanks capable of standing up to the best German armor, and its success on the battlefield demonstrated the effectiveness of Soviet tank design. Variants and Operators Several variants of the IS-2 were developed during and after the war. The original IS-85, IS-1, was armed with an 85mm gun, but many of these were rearmed with the 122mm gun before being issued as IS-2s. The IS-100 was another prototype that featured a 100mm gun, but it was ultimately not adopted in favor of the 122mm armed IS-2. The IS-2M was the most significant post-war variant, incorporating numerous upgrades to extend the service life of the tank. The IS-2 was used by several countries, including China, Cuba, and North Korea. 
In China, the IS-2 saw limited service during the Korean War, although it was primarily kept in reserve. Cuba received IS-2Ms in the 1960s, and these tanks were used for training and as part of the country's armored forces. In Eastern Europe, the IS-2 was operated by Czechoslovakia, East Germany, Hungary, and Poland, with many of these tanks remaining in service well into the 1960s. Legacy and Surviving Examples Today, the IS-2 is remembered as one of the most iconic Soviet tanks of World War II. Its design influenced later Soviet heavy tanks, including the IS-3 and the T-10, and its success in combat helped solidify the reputation of Soviet armored forces. Several IS-2 tanks have been preserved in museums and as monuments, serving as a reminder of their role in the war. Examples can be found in Poland, China, Russia, and other countries, with some still in operational condition for display purposes. The IS-2's legacy is not just one of technical innovation, but also of the resilience and determination of the Soviet forces during one of the most challenging periods in their history. The tank's ability to face the best of German engineering and come out on top is a testament to the effectiveness of its design and the bravery of its crews. For those interested in military history in World War II, the story of the IS-2 is a fascinating example of how technology, strategy, and determination can come together to change the course of a conflict.